That was a really simple process. We gave the guy our money and our ID cards. He typed in our information and we got our music carts, which gave us access for a year to all the state-owned museums and historic sites. The first place we visited was the Topkapi Palace Museum. It's an impressive entrance. There's a great collection of very beautiful stuff here, but one of the things that's a little bit disappointing is the fact that pretty much every area you go into, there's no filming allowed, no cameras or video cameras are allowed, so you can't really share the joy. <laughs> it's a beautiful place and it's uh, very opulent. I mean, we could share that joy, that's beautiful. At the end of the gardens, we had a fantastic view of the Bosphorus Straits. This first bridge is the bridge we walked across yesterday to walk up to the Galata Tower. It's quite a hike. There's constant maintenance and restoration work going on in various parts of the palace. Um, and so when you get to the entrance, the, there's a little sliding thing that says this bit's open, this bit's closed, this bit's open, this bit's closed. And um, I guess you just got to pick your days if you've got enough time to wait for something to be reopened. But then again, you might be waiting months for some of these things because they're big jobs. It's one of the jobs they're doing, they're replacing all the lead sheeting on the roofs. That's going to take some time. Well, I think we timed that quite well. It's now absolutely chock-a-block and there's all sorts of tours going on there. Yes. Especially lots of loud tours with children. Yes, so definitely, <laughs> definitely came early and avoided that. That was good. And there's the queue. <laughs> so now we're off to the Hagia Sophia. Um, we shouldn't have to face any queues simply because we've got our entrance tickets now. And I don't think there's like a proper queue to get in, so to speak. Wow, this place is huge. It's actually a lot less crowded than I thought it would be. Getting in was fairly straightforward with our museum cart. So this place used to be a church and then a mosque and then they turned it into a museum. Very tall people came in, obviously. That's why it's called Hyacinth Sophia. Oh. <laughs> Get back in oh, your box. <laughs> Not sure that the camera's going to do justice to the vastness of this building. Just unbelievably huge. Whoa. Some sort of rock, possibly granite. One solid piece of column carved out of it. massive chandelier you can see behind me is I would guess probably around about 10 meters across and it's actually suspended from the very top of the dome. How do 
to get that up there. And who has to change the light bulbs? <laughs> So this is an original 13th century mosaic and each the picture is made up of individual little teeny tiles. That's Christ in the middle, John the Baptist on the right and Virgin Mary on the left. It's a shame that's all that's left of it because this is what it would have looked like when it was whole. For some strange reason known only to the designers, there's a window here, window here and just outside the window you can see a wall. So they couldn't put a window here. They just painted one in instead and actually made it look, tried to make it look three-dimensional if you look at it from this angle. So that was the Hagia Sophia. Um, very interesting. Uh, got a lot of history behind it. Now we are off to the Grand Bazaar where we're going to try and find a place to eat. There should be some in there that can help us out and um, we figured it would be more authentic food than the usual tourist restaurants outside the Hagia Sophia. Yeah, they reckon you need quite a while in the bazaar itself because it's actually massive. Yeah, it's two hours they reckon there's a minimum. Yeah, and they say take patience with you. <laughs> We have entered the Grand Bazaar. Now I guess we need to follow our noses and find food. We went through the Grand Bazaar and about halfway through we saw a little entryway which brought us outside into a courtyard and we found a place to have lunch. What are you having, Beth? Doing And I'm having the doner kebab. As we were leaving the Grand Bazaar, we discovered an ancient courtyard. It's Tuesday morning and we've got to leave the hotel in a couple of hours. Uh, we're both feeling as though we've been run over by Mack trucks after all the walking we've been doing around the city. Yeah. Hips, legs, knees. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> is it old age or is it just lack of regular exercise on a boat? I don't know. I think it's a bit of both. I think I it's think. a bit of both. Yeah. <laughs> so we're going to get this room ship shape, pack everything up. Um, we've got a plan to get back to the airport. Uh, it's kind of like almost the reverse of what we did to get here, mm. uh, except we're actually going to get on the tram, which is just literally one road up from mm. the, uh, the hotel here, which is yeah. great. Yeah, sort of walking. So yeah. Istanbul has been very interesting. Yeah, um, it, it didn't open up to us easily, but it's a fascinating place. It is. It's a lot of history. Um, yeah, it's sort of ancient and modern all blended together. If you liked what we did in this video, don't forget to hit the subscribe button and click the bell icon so you get a notification every time we put a new video out. Thanks for watching. Yeah, thanks. We've got to get up now. Okay. We've got to switch the camera off first though. Okay. We don't want to lose any subscribers. <laughs> oh god, that would be awful, wouldn't it? <laughs> no, for everyone. Breakfast of champions before we head off to the airport. <laughs> Gotta have a kebab.
Right, that's breakfast done. Back to the hotel. Yep. Check out and uh, jump on the tram. Yeah, for our two hour journey Back to, to the, the airport. airport. The last leg of our journey from Istanbul to the airport was to get a bus. And although we eventually found out where the bus stop was, the bus never turned up. So rather than be late, we got a taxi. As you can plainly see, we're now in a taxi. Yeah. And the reason why was because the bus that was going to take us to the airport didn't turn up on time and we're cut it a bit fine now. So we've got a taxi to the airport for 35 lira. So that's not too bad. Yeah. Should be there on time. Well, as usual, we got stopped. Baz got stopped. <laughs> They don't like the look of my laptop. They think it's an explosive device. Um, so we've arrived, it's 12.30. Flight leaves at 12.55. We're at the gate. Uh, they haven't started loading yet. So we're in time. It's all good. And she gets stressed. I like to have a bigger margin. <laughs> anyway, we're here. We're here. Delaman Airport, 2.30 at the Tuesday afternoon yep. and that means we're 15 minutes behind schedule mm -hmm. and hopefully the guy is here to pick us up. Yeah. We'll find out when we get outside. Yeah. Yes, please. If you're thinking of visiting Istanbul, we suggest that you allow at least seven days because there is so much of this wonderful city to see. And we are home. home. <laughs> it's nice coming back, isn't it? It really is. It's only been three days, but it's good to be home. As well as our weekly videos, we also produce weekly blogs, which you can find on our website, which is www.abc.com.au. The blogs contain much more information than we include in the videos, and they have a lot of still pictures too. So check them out. Next week on Sailing ABC, we officially begin our summer sailing season for 2019, heading off to some stunning Turkish anchorages.